Okay, let's take this equation and do something with it that's important to society. How can we learn from Einstein and solve our energy needs? How can we get the energy that all of us want and need without destroying the planet? Well, in a recent year, all the residents of the United States used a total of 25 kilowatt hours equivalent energy. And that turns out to be as much energy as we'd get if we converted one ton of mass into useful energy, according to Al's equation. So the problem that we have really is how to best convert one ton of mass into energy. What are the options? Well, we can burn coal. We've got a lot of coal. It makes a lot of heat. Turns out, if we got all of our energy from burning coal, we need to burn five billion tons of coal every year to get one ton of energy. Tremendously inefficient. I mean, would you run a business on the basis of making five billion sales calls to get a single order? Crazy, right? And what's left over? Well, if you weighed everything carefully before the combustion and everything carefully afterwards, you'd find there was the one missing ton at the end, that's what made all the energy, and we'd be left with five billion minus one tons of pollution. That's what comes out of burning the coal. So it's tremendously inefficient, it's also tremendously dirty. What else can we do? Well, gasoline's got more bang per pound than coal, but we'd still need to burn two billion tons of gasoline every year to get all of our energy, and we'd be left with two billion minus one tons of pollution. So why is it that with all the clever engineers and scientists in the world, we can't do a whole lot better? If we could do three times better, energy would cost three times less, and there would be three times less pollution, and we'd all be happy, right? So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Einstein told us that all the fuels that we might possibly use are all made of atoms, like everything else. So when we try to get energy out, what we're really trying to do is get energy from an atom. Atoms are very small, and they're very simple. They just have two parts, inside and an outside, something like a pair. The inside is the nucleus, the outside is a cloud of electrons, they have different charges, so that's what holds them together, and the nucleus is actually very, very small, even compared to the atom. If you enlarge an atom so it would fill a football stadium, the nucleus would be only the size of a single kernel of corn sitting on the 50-yard line. But even though it's so minute, the nucleus has got almost all the mass. It weighs four to 5,000 times as much as all the electrons that are filling that football stadium. And it has millions of times more energy. So the nucleus is really what the atom's all about. The electrons are around for the ride. So when we have any chemical reaction like burning coal or gasoline, or combining hydrogen and oxygen to make a molecule of water, what we're doing is we're rearranging the electrons, but that's not where the energy is. If we want more energy, if we want to be efficient, if we want to pollute less, we have to go where the energy is in the atom, and that's in the nucleus. And there's two ways to get energy out of a nucleus. You can make it bigger, and you can make it smaller. See, nuclear physics isn't really all that tough. Making it smaller is called nuclear fission. This is what we do today in our power plants that are around the world. We take a very large atom like uranium, we allow it to split into smaller atoms. The good news is it releases about 100,000 times as much energy as burning coal. The bad news is these end products are highly radioactive. If we were to get all our energy from uranium fission, we would burn 50,000 tons of uranium every year. We'd get our one ton of energy, and we'd be left with 49,999 tons of radioactive waste. Now, we had a plan for that. We were going to bury all of that Harry Reid's home state. <laughs> but that's out. So let's look at the alternative, nuclear fusion. This is really the opposite. This is where we take small atoms, merge them together, and make a bigger one. And the end products here are helium, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and iron. Helium plus the atoms that make life itself. This process is 10 million times more efficient than a typical chemical reaction. This is the process that nature uses to make energy. Nature does not pollute. Nature is not inefficient. Nature has figured out how to do this right. In the center of every star, nature is converting hydrogen into these heavier elements and producing millions of times more energy per pound out of its fuel than we do, with no pollution. This is a picture of our sun on what you might call a bad hair day. 
And that little white dot that I added shows you how big the Earth would be by comparison. So, it's stars are immense, and our sun is just sort of an average one. So all of the elements that life requires were created in the center of stars. And when these stars came to the end of their lives, they cast off their outer layers, seeding the cosmos with the vital elements of life. And these vital elements are in our bodies today. Those elements later condensed to form new stars, new planets, and ultimately us. So we really are children of the stars. 90% of your body was made in the star. So if you see a twinkle in your loved one's eye, <laughs> that really is a little bit of a star in there. If we learn from nature and Einstein, and we mastered the process that stars used, we would only need to burn 133 tons of hydrogen every year, of which the ocean has a virtually unlimited supply. We would get our one ton of energy, and we would be left with 132 tons of helium gas, which is a perfectly clean substance. We could fill party balloons and blimps, and everything would be happy. Now, we've been working on this for 50 years, making very slow progress, but in the last few years, in the last three years, a small company in Chicago has figured out a way not to do exactly what stars do, but to do something that's relatively equivalent, something that has the same efficiency factor, something that will not produce radioactive waste, something that will not produce, produce pollution, something that would be small and convenient, and if it works, it will change the face of society around the world. Because energy would then be very much cheaper, completely clean, and unlimited in its abundance. Again, based on the principles that Einstein first announced. So, let me conclude by saying that this strange little man who never quite fit in, either in science or in society, revolutionized our understanding of atoms, light, gravity, mass, motion, space, time, and the universe itself, which is not too shabby for a guy that no one wanted to hire. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, sir. If Einstein were alive today, what do you think he'd be doing? Uh, he would probably be doing what he did for the last 30 years of his life, was trying to unify all the theories of physics into one great, all-encompassing idea. Uh, a thousand physicists have been working on that since he died, and they haven't succeeded either. But as I said, he never quit, so that's probably what he'd be doing. Yes, sir. What is the amazing source of energy that you spoke of in the end? It's called Low Energy Neutron Reactions. No, I have nothing to do with that company. I, uh, if, they, if the stock was available, I'd buy it, but I don't own any now. How does it work? How does it work? The problem with nuclear fusion, which makes it so difficult, is that you're trying to get positive charges to come together. Nature doesn't want to do that. So what these guys have figured out is how to convert the positive charge into a neutral particle, a neutron, at low energy, and then normal nuclei will suck up a neutron as if it's an M&M. &M. And uh, if you do it right, you can cause the same reactions that stars do, but without the positive charge problem. Yes, sir. 